Today's show is moving up as we install a beautiful, practical, and economical spiral staircase. We'll show you how to center the stair, install the treads, spindles, and railings, and finish it off with beautiful, natural oak. Hi, I'm Ed Feldman. And I'm Joe Lorario. And today we're in a house in Media, PA. Media? Yeah, soon to be occupied by the M. McLuhan family, or, or so we got the message. Anyway, it's a brand new house. It's still under construction. You're going to be hearing a lot of noise and machinery and maybe even some cursing if somebody hits their finger with a hammer. But this house has a second floor. It does. It lacks something that all houses with second floors need. Hey, what are we doing today? Stairs! Ah, what a setup. Now, all our fancy friends have private service elevators or those gliders like uh, Mrs. Morley from The Farmer's Daughter. But we got That's what I really want to put in. A dumb waiter. <laughs> But we're going to be building a spiral staircase today. We can't build it from up there. we got to start from down here. We, how'd you get up there anyway? Oh, no. Come on. Let's build. Come on. You put on a few pounds. It's a muscle weight, yeah. <laughs> We're going to be putting in a five foot in diameter. In diameter, not in height, because then you would need milk crates to finish off. Spiral staircase from the iron shop. The iron shop. It's going to bridge the family room right here to the second floor balcony up there. And you don't want to build the stairway out because it would run right into the, uh, the, the double doors here. And you could get into the kitchen ever, and sometimes you get hungry. So this is going to be an iron staircase. It's going to be a full spiral, goes with, around once. With oak treads. Oh, absolutely. Now, these are kits. They come in all kinds of designs. Oh, they're contemporary. They're Victorian. It's amazing. And let's meet one of the owners of the iron shop, Ron Cohen. Let's give him a great big hand. Hey. Come on down. Lots hey, Ron. How, you, Hello, doing? Ron. how, how you, you doing? How are you? Nice to meet you. Hi. As if we didn't know already, what's good about a spiral staircase? Well, it takes up a little amount of room mm -hmm. rather than ruining the whole room here. Mm -hmm. Originally, what was planned here mm -hmm. was a stairway to come down along that wall, okay. uh -huh. which would have consumed that whole wall, interfered with the space getting off, and you'd have to walk all the way there to go all the way back there down to the right. kitchen. I've consumed a few walls myself, and here they could have a huge etagere with all kinds of tchotchkes now. Okay. Or a Lorario Muriel. Too expensive. Too expensive, though. So, so what, what we've planned here is a spiral stair that's going to go here. Mm -hmm. You're going to walk out, make one complete turn. We'll be able to exit into the kitchen or into the family room. Terrific. So centrally located. Now, what about codes? You've got to check them, right? That's one of the first things you want to check. Uh, this stair is designed to meet the requirements of the BOCA mm -hmm. code. BOCA, like Raton? BOCA. Uh, not quite. It okay. stands for Building Official Code Administration ah. out of Short Hill, Illinois. Oh, and they set up a <laughs> yes, and they set up a set of standards and minimal dimensions, and this stair was designed to meet all of those code requirements. And this stairway is too boca. I, oh, I thought it was the paradise. <laughs> all right, let's get started. Very now, good. first, we're going to be putting down a central, a central, central pole. We're going like to locate the, the center column. Okay. And once we locate the center column, we're going to stack it with all the treads. We're going to put well, the landing on it. Yeah. And then we're actually going to work down from the top. So we're going to have to find the center. Now, it's a five foot in diameter uh, staircase. So the center is going to be normally 30. The radius. The, the radius. radius. That's something. radius. The 30 inches in, but we're adding an inch. So there's clearance for your hand when you grab the rail. So we're going to measure 31 inches out from this wall. And then 31 inches from this wall. And then we will drop a plumb line from both uh, marks. And that's where we'll find Transfer them to the ground. And then we'll find our center mark. 31. 31, right there. OK. That's our mark, right there. See that? It's right on the mark. On your mark? Look, here's the landing. See What this? goes up there? It goes right up there, but we're going to use that to mark for our base plate what goes down here. Here's where the pole fits in, that the whole thing winds around. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this landing, set it down. First position the landing plate on the floor directly below the place it will be mounted above. By aligning the two corners with the plumb bob marks on the floor, we know that the plate is in the exact position relative to the marks we measured on the wall of the landing above. Right about there. Is that good? Yeah, and now make a mark. And well, I'm, I'm, even though this keeps falling out of my hand because it's... We then trace a line inside the collar, which is exactly where the center post will be. So the next thing we have to do is center uh, the, the circle. And for that, we're going to draw a cross hard. That's cross, where this is going to go, approximately. Cross hard. Cross hard. Cross hard. Then draw perpendicular lines from each of the two plumb bob marks through the circle. The center of the circle is where those two lines intersect. And here's our base 
plate. Which is 10 inches, see that? In diameter. So if we measure out five inches from the center mark on all our radii. Radii, that's two. Two eyes in that word, we will get the outer edges, the perimeter of our base plate. Well, here goes one here, right? Five inches, right? We're right on the tab. You have the There's pencil? Five. I have a pencil right here. You're still with those, that antique round pencil. Five inches here. Enter the 20th century with the flat pencil technology, would you? Let's turn our base flat, uh, plate over. And then we put this down. We, we want to intersect the holes. Well, of course, on all the lines. And move this out so it hits all the perimeter marks. Right and we want there. the lines going right through the center of those holes. And we're going to use these lag, to be exact. lag bolts. Lag bolts and an impact driver. Lag screws. I'm moving my hand out of there. Oh. All right, next. Feldman. Yes? You've yep. been a naughty boy. Oh, I know it, but I'm going to change, I swear, tomorrow. For that, I want you to build me a spiral staircase. Anything you need, boss, right away. OK. <laughs> We're going to put in the center pole in the base plate next. And for that, you need an omnipotent friend well, lift up. up above you. And yes, it, welcome to the, the Highland on. Games. Oh. oh, perfect. More spiral staircase after this. Come on, come on. Well, we found the center point. We put down our base plate, and we've erected our pole. See that? Now we have to put the treads on. Right, and these are iron treads. Later, they're going to have beautiful... A nice oak, real wood. Lovely trim, but that'll come later. The first thing we have to do is drop them down over the pole and we're gonna alternate them. One on this side, one on that side, so the pole doesn't start to lean. Why don't you put one up there? All right. I'll put one over here. Be careful. Of course. Now, give me that one. I can take that one down off the ladder. Second floor. Now it's time to come in for a landing and put the landing on. Landing. <laughs> hey, what's that lady out there? Oh, we all know her. Yeah, what's she what? holding? It's a white light. Oh, she's shining a white light. Well, she yeah. wants to show something. Right. Now, this is an iron landing, but a piece of oak is going to fit on top of it. Exactly. And that piece of oak is 1 and 1 16th inch. 1 and 1 16th inch represents the thickness of the oak landing covering. We will position the top of the iron landing at that mark so the oak, when it's attached, will be flush with the balcony. And you already made your mark over in the I corner. I made a mark right here. All right. 1 and 1 16th. Now, we're going to slide this landing over the pole because okay. it's got a collar on it. And over here are some set screws. Right. And Joe has the fabulous Allen wrench in hand. Here it and, is, and the fabulous he, Allen wrench right here. And, and once this we, is some guy, Allen, invented this, and he said because he wanted to be different. Hey, hey, don't put it down. Entire Swedish furniture conglomerates could not exist without that. Here's the bird in the skirt, and you're right. All right, right eat me. You this got, part I don't like. Can you get it? Yeah. OK, now hold it up. Now let's bring this down. It's got to go around this way, Mo. This way? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I figured. Now, I'm going to hold it well, right when it meets that mark. <sighs> OK, now I'm just going to do the top two oh, to hold it in place. If I can see the other one. There we go. Now I got it. I got it. I got it. I ain't got it. Really nice and tight. <sighs> Now our landing is here, and it's tightened with the set screws when the Allen wrenching. And? Now we're going to have to attach it. And we got to check for plumb on the pole. Got to check for plumb and level first before we put the lag screws in. Oh, yes. And plumb, of course, comes from the plumb being a fruit on a tree, falls down to vertical. the ground. Plumb. So that's why it's vertical. <laughs> we're going to put this up, and you want to check for plumb. It's plumb, OK? Perfect. And now we'll move this around here. And we'll move this here. We can see we're, we're plumb all the way around. Hand it to me. Uh, well, this side's got to come up a little bit. Let's well, that move. one I, I can move from underneath, but well, let's. Let's. 
Yeah, the same amount. Right, so now let's, let's check out here. Across there. Oh, see, this is perfect here. That's a floating bubble. So it's quite obvious to me. Right, so let's leave that, that level there. So when we finagle... Oh, let me, let me do it. Because the landing shifted slightly while we tightened our set screws, we had to raise the front of the landing up slightly to adjust it for level and make sure that we were on our 1 and 1 16th inch mark. Ah, oh, there, that one. After everything's level, time to attach it with our lag screws. Make sure you wear your Pat Cooper glasses, too. Who told you that? <laughs> now I'm going to put this, uh, it's a 5 16th lag screw. That's thick, boy. There we go. La, 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 la. Now we'll put up the trades. Oh, Henry. you're right, Henry. Let's do that. But before we put up the trades, we're going to put up the top spindle. And this bolt, it's going to go through the top hole of this and through this pre-drilled slot. The Why not a hole wire slot? That will reveal itself in time, my friends. Uh, let me see. Is that, would that be for adjustment? That would be for uh, adjustment, okay. my... So I'll put the lock washer on. Slapsy maxi. Uh, yeah. i put it that on right here. Uh, yeah. Now this is going to tie into our tread too. Now how did we see, set... now it moves, look. Yeah. yeah, and we might have to move it. How do we get the, the average or the exact distance for all the risers? Well, we took the total distance from the finished floor to the height of the landing here, right. and we divided it by 13. That's the number of risers we've had. We divided that, and therefore we got that number to be exactly 9 and 3 sixteenths inches per rise. So this top of this Look. collar is the same as the top of the landing. And this is 9 and 3 sixteenths where you have a mark there, see? No, no need to make a mark out here. Of course not, because this is adjustable. But what we'll do is we'll take this, lift and this lift up. lift this up until it hits that mark. See right there? Now, could you hold that? I can hold that while you handle I'm gonna, the set I'm going to take the Allen wrench here, and I'm going to set them in place. All right, this one, there's four of them. Before I tighten this, let's put this down. Let's see if this is level. That is pretty good. All right. And you can tighten these set screws to change the pitch of each tread. Before I tighten everything up, make sure that that's plumb. This is plumb is from this plumb? angle. What about the side in this way? Is it plumb? It's almost plumb, but I will adjust this and you will tighten accordingly. Okay, I need this ratchet. Nice of course ratchet, you do. And I need the, uh, the other. The little crescent. Are we good up there? Yep. All right, now you have to tighten under the tread as well. I'm going there. After we finish this, we're going to set all the other treads with attendant spindles. We'll be back. Look for the kids. See, I'm pierced. Yeah. All right, now to send the bottom tread down and the last spindle, which is put in a little differently. How does it look down there? See. Oh. <laughs> Wait a minute now. <laughs> By the way, this was really easy to do, and a lot of people think that uh, spiral staircases might be dangerous, but actually they're less dangerous than a long straight staircase. Once it's all together, it's not dangerous. Well, of course not. Well, if the truck carrying it with hit, hits oh, you, well, then, then that's it's not, dangerous. Right. Course, then but a long straight staircase, you're liable to fall off the top and keep going and going. But here, you'd have to make so many turns. You'd have to really try to fall down. One time steps. I fell down and I got stuck. I just slept there the whole night. It was <laughs> well, great. Well, you slept a lot of strange I places until I got better. Night. So we go. first, we measure down and make sure it's 9 and 3 sixteenths once again with our imaginary tape measure. Well, it's measured. It's on there. It's already measured, and we've made that mark. And now we'll finger tighten Hold this up. the spindle here. Hold that up. Should I get back there? Let me get back. Why don't you do that? Okay, let me take the Look, nut. The Oscars. Let me, <laughs> let me put this in here. I think we should host the Oscars. Oh, wouldn't that be great? Yeah, I wouldn't give it to the people I didn't like. And now the Oscar to Richard Gere. Nah. nah. All yeah, right, lift that up to the 9 16 marks that she's already made. It's right about there, and then I'm gonna tighten. I'll put my foot under there. Do the set screw thing. Right there, you got it? Yeah. Good there. Attention class, yes. the last spindle, the final spindle, and here it is, and it goes right down. Wait a minute, boss. It's, uh, got to cut it down. 
It's a little too long. They're all made the same size because they're made at the factory. Unfortunately, this house was not. They made it out here. So the floor is up too high. Up too so, high. So I think we have to lower the floor just a little. Yeah, that, that would be easiest. Let's cut the spindle down. Got to cut the spindle. We? All right. Now, how do we get that measurement? Oh, my goodness. All these spindles. Well, first we'll measure up from the tread here. Right. Up from the tread. Right. And here's a little factory cut. They little they etch this right here. And it is 32 and 7 eighths from this cut down to the tread, okay? Right. That's one now, measurement. Now, that's one measurement. Now we want to measure from the top of the tread to the flow, which gives you 8. 32 and 7 eighths and 8. 40 and 7 eighths. 40 and 7 eighths. And we, that's what we'll cut it at. Incorrect, my we friend. We will not? We're taking off an eighth, ah, a little tiny eighth. Because, because see this? This is the bottom piece that what the spindle fits on. And that eighth of an inch is allowance for this plate and the actual weld. So let's measure the spindle. So we'll measure the spindle. 40 and 6 eighths, which in this universe is 40 and 3 quarters. Measure from the factory cut on the spindle and make a mark. Wear eye protection and cut with a porta band saw or a hacksaw, if you're a hack. Pound the spindle over the starting plate and attach it to the slot on the tread with a bolt, washer, and a nut like yours truly. Now plumb that spindle on two sides and drive the starting plate into the floor with lag screws. So butch. Finally, tighten the bolts on the inside of the treads with a ratchet wrench. This is aluminum. It's the top. It's the rail that's going to fit over the top of all the spindles. However, it's kind of short. How do you get it out? You get, you... This is a circle, but our spiral staircase is a... Say spiral. It's a spiral. Now, we can make this circle into a spiral. Sure we're, we can. We're honest. We're going to we show are. you how. Actually make it into a helix, I think. It, no, we can make it into a spiral. A helix is good. We're going to turn this. See, this first, is... First, we have to make it the diameter of the spiral. Remember, it was about a five-foot diameter. So we want to get this to about five and a half, and then we can pull it out like a slinky almost. Right, and then we'll make it spiral. Now, we want to pull this out to, all the, to the general height of... The general design, shape, going, configuration. Well, the height. Oh, good, right, go. Here we are. All right. Here we are. Uh-uh. Wait there a minute. Go. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, now we go. There, there we go. go. Oh, Come hey, on, let me take We're this all paper. wound. We're all unwound. Joe's going to take the plastic, protective plastic off, and we're going to feed it up the steps. I'm going to go up to the top, set it where it has to go, tape it onto the spindle so that I can come down and help Ed. So let's right. lift it over to center pole. There you go. These two marks are going to fall on both sides of this, a hinged spindle top. I'm right there, buddy. You're right there? Yes, you, yes I am. All right, let me get some tape up here. This seems like uh, extra. We'll probably take that off. <laughs> let me put one right here. The spindles are screwed to the railing through the hinge spindle top. Make sure the spindle is plumb. Pre-drill the hole first, then screw it. Attach all the spindles the same way. Isn't this fun? <laughs> <laughs> We've got a tape measure and masking tape because we're going to cut off the end of the top rail. Now, why, you may ask. Well, when you come down the steps here, if you're going to make a left, as these people are, into their kitchen, you're going to bang yourself. Because it, it, it's too long. But the, there are options open to you. Make a little longer, a little shorter. See, I would just curl it all the way around. All the way around yeah. with, it, with a big... Uh, with a fine nail on it. With a statue. It's two inches. Two inches. We're going to cut off two inches. All, all but two inches, that is to say. But there's another way to do it, and this is a good way to get a nice straight cut. We've got a two inch wide. So you can go over tape. here, or you can go over here. I'm just going to go right here, okay? Okay. Because that's the way you like it. So if you need two inches of masking tape, you go into the uh, hardware store and ask for two inch masking tape. That makes but sense. But when I do that, they just give me two inches of length, which is enough cut for it. like, okay, fine. Cut. It's about All right. a quarter pound of pepperoni. Once the rail is cut to size, use a metal file to get rid of any rough edges, then insert the cap. All right, let's put in the in-between spindles, which and have a technical name. Very technical name. They're called the in-between spindles. And they come in three sizes, and for front, middle, and back, as they go up the staircase, they get longer, obviously. Mm -hmm. The reason for these in-between spindles? Well, code tells us that you have to have less than a four-inch gap in situations like this. So, so you can't get hurt, because well, you remember the Patty Duke show. She always got her head stuck in between. And this is such a small gap, the only thing that could fit in there is a weasel, and who cares if they can skitter through. First, bolt the spindle cup into the pre-drilled hole in the tread from underneath. Make sure the hole in the cup faces in. 
Slip a spindle into the cup and plumb. Yum. Pre-drill through the hinge spindle top into the rail and screw. Yikes. Use the same procedure on all the in-between spindles. It's landing rail time. Landing rail? Yes, here it is. It's the rail for the landing. Look, it's like a harp. <laughs> Isn't that nice? To attach the landing rail, finger tighten a bolt, washer, and nut through the pre-drilled hole in the rail and the slot on the landing. Now measure and mark the center pole 37 inches from the landing, 36 inches for the rail, which is code, and an additional one inch for the oak covering, which will eventually be put on top of the landing. Line the rail up with the mark, level, and then plumb. Then make a mark through the pre-drilled holes on the rail top and bottom. Pre-drill, then attach with self-tapping screws. Now finally, use a block of wood and a hammer oh, or a rubber mallet done. to tap the brass finial into the landing rail post and the center pole. The remainder of the balcony rail is attached the same way. Pre-built sections are attached to posts, which are then lag screwed into the floor. Snack time? It's snack time. Be back after this, or I'll eat this yodel. Show them how the tread goes on. Okay, here's how the tread goes on. Here, hold this tread. Don't Look, tread here's up. how the tread goes on. I'm going to get up here, and I'm going to fit it around the center post. And then it slides right on, almost like... Oh look! look it how slides right it in. Fits. Look, you can actually cut me if you do it just right. No. Now, first you have to pre-drill underneath, and to get it just right, you have to allow the same amount of overhang on each side. It's about an inch overhang on each side, and you don't want it hitting the rails or hitting the center post. You want to center it away from each one. Otherwise, when you tread on it, it may squeak if it's if it rubs against any metal. Once the oak covering is positioned, stand on it to hold it in place and then pre-drill through the pre-drilled holes on the tread. Go about one inch in, then four screws per tread. Staircase is finished, but the treads are not. Well, we showed you how to install the treads, but you should finish them. Either stain or clear coat before you install them. All sides and all those edges. You want to get all sides and all edges. It's very important. Sealed. Sealed. Now the rest of the uh, of the staircase is already primed, but you can color it any color paint you want according to your own crazy desires. It doesn't matter. This is beautiful. It was easy. Yeah. Look at here's the before and the after. The after. We want to please thank Ron Cohen, all the Cohen boys, and everybody at the Iron Shop. They were really great. And they helpful. really were. And they had all the tools too. Right, but we did it ourselves. <laughs> now we'd like to say, Don't cry for, for me, Argentina. We sing better than she does. I know. I'm Ed Feldman. And I'm Joe Lorario. And as always, what we say, we're material girls. Home oh, is nice. nice. I'm going to sleep. This is my room.